Hello everybody, it's Monk here at Game From Scratch, and right now the graphics conference SIGGRAPH is going on, and we've gotten a whole slew of computer graphics or DCC-based uh, announcements this week. New products, new versions, new licensing, that kind of stuff. And this is one that accidentally slipped under the radar for me. You see, two days ago, there was a bit of an announcement. There was Blender 2.80 was released. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Blender project, and I focused on it, and you guys focused on it as well. There was a lot of excitement around this particular release. However, on the same day, there was actually another announcement with some significance to indie developers, and that is that um, Autodesk, or yeah, Autodesk, are uh, launching 3ds Max Indie and Maya Indie. So, what exactly are Max and Maya Indie? Well, these are full fat versions of 3ds Max and of Maya. This is the full product like you would get if you paid the, the full price tag. The difference is this is geared to your income level. So if you make $100,000 or less in revenue, you are qualified. There are other some limitations as well. Um, you can only actually have one license per user or organization. That means if you've got two people working on your game and you're like an organization, you can't actually get two licenses. You need to have like one individual license per organization or per user. On top of that, it is limited to regions of Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, or the US. So if you're in any other area, you cannot qualify. So basically, nutshell, you make $100,000 a year or less, you live in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, or the US, and there's only one of you, you can get the full version of Max or Maya uh, for $250 US a month. That works out to about $310 Canadian per month. Now, of course, sorry, per year. And that is a straight out um, subscription price. There is no outright purchasing option. You can only go this route. But if you're looking at it, you no longer qualified for the free student version. You're just getting started, but you wanted to stick with Autodesk products. This is a heck of a lot cheaper than having to buy the full license. But there's something really scummy here, and I'll get back to that in just a second. But you will see here, the full version of Maya is uh, uh why are you giving me canadian pricing like basically 200 a month us or 1500 a year canadian or paid on a three-year term uh probably about 4500 us and then autodesk uh, 3d studios max is the same pricing basically and you can get another bundle that has both of them together but as you can see um it's basically the cost of one month instead of one year. So there is quite a bit of savings here, but again, there is a giant gotcha here. Now, first off, there are no guarantees that this continues to exist. So you'll see down here, they say Autodesk 3ds Max Indie, and same thing for Maya, by the way, but Autodesk 3ds Max Indie is the same industry standard product used by professional studios at a price point accessible to those who are just starting out. If you are a recent graduate or a freelancer with less than $100,000 US income per year, in revenue, you can get started now. Please note, this is a limited time offer. So they could change it at any time. They could open it up to more markets or they could get rid of it completely. Now time for the scummy bit. So you read this little fine print right down here, this get 3DS Max Indie bit. Note, in order to avoid an automatic renewal at the full subscription price of 3DS Max, you must turn off automatic renewal once you subscribe to 3DS Max Indie. In order to turn this off, uh, you need to go to blah, blah, blah settings and turn it to follow the instructions there. Huh. So basically, when you sign up for 3D Studios Max Indie or Maya Indie, it sets you up for automatic renewal at the full cost of 3ds max or at the full price of maya so then we're talking these prices right here so when a year is up your credit card is going to get hit for two grand unless you've turned that particular seat off so yeah yeah that's that's definitely eh, that's either i don't know if that's scummy or lazy i don't think it's a trap you don't trap someone with a price that goes up tenfold like that's insane so if that was their trick um that 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 is not a good way to get and keep customers. People aren't gonna just see a two thousand dollar charge hit their card and go, oh, oh well, okay, and then let it go. So I can't see that they're using this as a bait and switch type tactic. But this, if this is read right, that really sucks. Anyways, it's interesting to see. I know again, ninety nine percent of the comments down below are gonna be use Blender, and I gotta admit, with Blender getting better and better and better with every release. 
Yeah, it's kind of hard not to just kind of chime in with that chorus. But in all honesty, still, 3D Studios Max and Maya are the industry standards and, and pick the industry for the most part. Motion picture, film, uh, television, game. It's kind of one of those two products used in the majority of professional places. So if you are starting out and you want to uh, either freelance for those um, kind of places or uh, you're trying to transition to a job into one of those locations, this does make sense to be the tool you want to use. And also, Autodesk offer very, very good terms for students. You can basically get their products for free for three years and all of their products. So a lot of people are going to come out of the um, the educational space, and these are going to be their weapons of choice. And this $250 a year license is definitely going to appeal to them. While well, you kind of go through that gap of being, okay, I'm a student and I get all these special deals to I'm a professional and I can afford to pay for all these products. Well, this indie gap will kind of transition people between those without the huge price tag. Anyways, I will be interested to hear what you guys think. Is this a sign that they're actually taking lower cost alternatives or free alternatives like Blender seriously finally? Is it downward pressure on their pricing structure? Or is it just recognition that there's a lot more, you know, small or indie people out there that just can't afford their products, so they're creating a new tier to appeal to that group. There's two ways to look at it. Are they running scared or are they servicing a new market? Which way it goes and what way you think of it probably comes down to what you think of Autodesk right now, but I'm pretty sure I can guess again what a lot of the comments are going to be like down below. Let's please keep it as civil as possible. Anyways, what do you think? Is, is this uh, an interesting deal to you? Are, are you one of those people that's, you know, uh, fresh out of school but used to have Autodesk tools? In which case, is this like a banana? Anza to you, or is this just too little too late? Interested to hear, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.